Let me show you something else that's really useful when you're working with OpenType. And that is to create a number of elements. Now, as you can see here, I've really messed things up. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to get rid of the ordinals. There you go. And another thing I'm going to get rid of temporarily is standard ligatures. And I want to show you why. Well, here is the word office. And let's take a look at what it looks like. When you take away your ligatures, you will end up with something that looks similar to this. And what that means is there are certain letters when you put them together. And notice, I'm not squishing these letters closer together than they, what they normally should be. It's just set to zero letting. But in certain situations, there are certain letters that don't actually look good when they're right next to each other. And the reason being is because some elements overlap, like the I and the F, and even the second F here. So let me select this office, and I will set the open type options to say standard ligatures. And look what happens. It squishes them together, but it does so in a fashion that is going to be really nice and very conducive to good legibility. It makes it easier to read, it's less distracting, and in fact, it's not three letters. It's not FFI. This is one character, the FFI character. And there are many other ones that you can see when you work with ligatures. So any number of large bodies of text or anything like that should always have your standard ligatures chosen. And that's why it's there by default. And it's something that you can use. So let me show you something else. If I were to come in here and choose a different kind of font, something that is maybe more of a script-based font, something that's a little fancier, and let's just come in here with my name again, for example, and I'm going to select this, and I'm going to choose BI Bicom Script Pro. Now, notice when I do that, just press return. And let's take a look. First of all, I'm going to remove any of the open type elements that I have here, specifically the swash. And I just want to show you what it looks like with no swash. All right, that's great, but I'm going to make it a little bit larger so we can really get to see it. And also in here, I don't want any contextual alternatives, just to show you what it looks like normally. Hey, well, that's a nice little element of text. But let's make a copy of this, and now let's turn on all of our other possibilities. For example, I could come into the open type and I could say, hey, um, how's about rather than working with the regular pieces of text, maybe I want contextual alternatives. What does that mean? Well, check it out. If you click on it, notice what happened to the letter O. See how it's got this little swoosh going on right there? Very nice unlike the one that we have here. Not that there's anything wrong with this one, but it just doesn't look as fancy or have such a flourish as this one. Now, if we really want to go for something fancy, if, you know, somebody has contracted you to make their wedding invitation, which is ugh, one of the worst jobs as a graphic designer, but let's say, you know, you've got a relative and they need a wedding invitation or something, well, at least use a good pro script font and you could have access to things like this swash capitals. Look at this letter S in comparison to that one. There is no comparison. This is gorgeous letter S. It's got this crazy swoosh and it really looks very fun as you can see here. Let me show you some other possibilities here. I'll get rid of the ligatures and I'll just put these ones over here for a second. What if I were to take this one which doesn't have any ligatures or anything like that and if I come in here, let's select it and just write extremely, extremely good. All right, I'm going to, well, actually, I can get rid of these as well. I'll just move these over here. And here is the word extremely good. I'm going to make a copy of it so we can compare between two of our examples. Well, in this one, as you can see, really nothing crazy. It's just pretty straightforward, and it looks good. There's really nothing wrong with it. However, 
if I wanted it to look even more attractive, there's a number of things that we could do. Let's see. I'll select it here and I'll come in and we'll say open type. Let's try some contextual alternatives. And as you can see, it's really got some nice elements inside here. Very, very good. Notice the D is moving around, the X got this little swoop, the E has a little element inside there too. If I wanted to and make these capitals, for example, I can press my shift. That's what the first E looks like when it's in capital letters like this. However, if I come in here and I give it a swash capital, wow, that really makes a very big difference inside of what we're doing. If I came in here with the Y and the open types, and if I went into, you know, looking at how that looks, you can see that there's a lot of different possibilities depending upon what you want to be working with. So there's a lot of elements inside there. There's swash capitals, there's old styles. I could even come in here and say stylistic alternatives. And let's look at the stylistic alternatives. First of all, let's turn that on. Perhaps every stylistic alternative is not going to work. Check it out. See if we turn that on. We've got some great ones, but not every one is really working with every element the way I want it to. For example, the R, E, M, E, not really what I need. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to remove the stylistic alternatives for those. But let's see what other stylistic alternatives have afforded us. Look at this great L so much more interesting than the one we have here. Look at the T with the long swooping cross against it. Look at the Y. That's incredible. Here's a basic Y. Look at this big swooping gorgeous Y. Really beautiful. The G stays the same. I'm going to bring the double O's back down to regular, not the ones that we have there. And check out the difference. It's really no comparison when you're thinking about what this would look like. If you really want to go for something that's very fancy and actually looks incredibly great, you can see the difference between this extremely good and this extremely good. So there's really no comparison here. Open Type affords you a lot of great possibilities, and working with Open Type and your fonts can make you that much of a better designer and that much of a better Photoshop user in the end.